We are currently in the biggest election year in history. Geopolitical tensions also a feature, a major feature of international politics. So companies are really turning to those with political experience to try and navigate that. We even have examples actually here in the UK. So Tony Blair, who was obviously the uh, former prime minister, was actually reportedly contracted as a senior advisor to JP Morgan. And that was just one year after stepping down as the leader of the country. And then we had William Hague, who was uh, the UK's foreign minister, also famously the leader of the opposition in the 90s. He landed a job at, uh, advising at Citigroup in 2017. And that was actually just as the bank was navigating Brexit and those effects. So you can see they really leaned on perhaps his international experience there as foreign minister. But this sort of relationship between political institutions and the private sector is most prominent in France and Switzerland. And actually, in the piece about this story on the Bloomberg Terminal, there's a senior fellow um, at a Brussels think tank, and he's quoted as saying that it's because of the sort of common origin of these individuals, that they have education and training in common, and it's perhaps there that these links are forming in the first place. So, for example, in France, the famous uh, Sciences Po University has not only educated numerous French presidents and prime ministers, it's also got alumni that are very high up in the financial services sector. So, for example, people that have gone on to become C-suite executives at companies like Société Générale, Morgan Stanley, and even policy makers in the French Central Bank as well. So, surely, T, with the, the closeness of these worlds between politi politics and finance attracts a lot of scrutiny as well. Well, it has been attracting a lot of scrutiny um, from governmental bodies for quite some time, and particularly, actually, in the European Parliament. They've described this sort of relationship between politics and finance as a sort of revolving door phenomenon, and they've actually said that it could really threaten uh, the democratic fabric of society if it's not closely regulated. We saw the um, former Prime Minister of Portugal, he was the subject of an ethics probe by the European Commission when he accepted a role as a senior advisor at Goldman Sachs. That was just two, less than two years, actually, after his term as president of the European Commission, um, which ended in two, 2014. He was cleared of any conflict, but we can see how this is an issue that has been arising in European politics and will probably continue to be a facet of it.